We're located in uh, just outside Armadale, which is in northern New South Wales. We're on a 120 acre block, which is obviously quite large. And um, because of the new bushfire regulations that have come into Australia, we were slightly limited on where we were actually going to site our house. Um, we've been planning on building for about 10 years or so, and this is actually our third site <laughs> to build on. Um, so I've gone through the planning uh, quite a bit and uh, because I designed the house myself um, with a bit of help from my husband and we we're uh, at a, a passive solar off the grid home. Um, I don't have any background in that, um, I was just interested in it and also my dad built one of the first sort of passive solar type homes in Canberra a long, long time ago and just having that light come in and the warmth you know, that's something that we've really missed. Um, so I've harnessed all my project management skills from my work experience. I've got a science background and I've worked a lot at universities and done a lot of project management. And so I thought, well, I think I can do, do it. But we were quite um, stressed about the whole process because we've never built before. Um, and even though I'm quite resourceful and competent, you know, it's the unknown. Um, yeah, so anyway, we've we'd moved around a little bit in the last four or five years and then we moved back to Armadale um, where we'd lived previously for about 16 years and we found a lovely block just outside town, about 10 minutes from town and a reasonably level site where, you know, the, we were able to really take full advantage of the northerly aspect. Because Armadale is quite a cold environment during winter, it's, it's got the full four seasons. So we had to design, well, I chose to design for the winter, but also the summers have been getting hotter. So we incorporated a few additional things to take account of that. But that's the sort of background, it's been 10 years in the making, but the actual design and build process was actually quite short for, for a house. So we were really pleased about that. Yeah, my um, husband and I are both uh, environmentalists um, and we've got that science background and we wanted to have a lighter footprint and we thought, yep, yeah, let's see if we can do it. And it just so happened that this block didn't have any power to it, didn't have any water to it. Um, so we were able to start from scratch and design. So I, with the help of a, a solid designer. I designed the solar system and the battery system as well. And, uh, you know, we had to do a full um, electrical audit. And yeah, the whole idea was so that we had lower bills, we could live a bit lighter off the earth. And also this area gets lots of thunderstorms. And being off the grid, we don't have to worry anymore about having blackouts. And, you know, we just, it, it's very comfortable. Well, the main concern was, um, not having been through the build process before, how would we know if um, the builder was actually constructing the house well? And how do we communicate with the builder? How do we ensure that we're running on schedule and to budget, those sorts of things. And when we'd been looking at building down the coast, I'd gone through a process of interviewing different builders. Um, but you know, it still left me a bit wanting. I still wasn't quite sure. And then when I was in Canberra, um, some other master builders actually were having a sort of information night, which I went along to. And that was really useful because it gave me lots of tips about, you know, the building process, how to go about thinking about it, and sort of debunk some of the myths about building. And that sort of encouraged me to do a little bit more research. And in the process of doing that, I discovered the Undercover Architect website and Amelia's fantastic work. I think it's fairly normal that if you haven't approached anything or done anything before, you're going to have a fair amount or, you know, anxiety because, you know, this is the biggest uh, financial investment that we've made. And um, so there's a lot riding on it. And also you want the house, you know, for us, it was going to be our one and only home. Um, because we're in our early 50s and we were looking for a house that we could live in um, for the next 20 to 30 years. So, you know, there was that sort of pressure, plus also the 
pressure about, well, how do you know if you're going to be diddled on the contract or is this a fair price? Um, are you keeping the schedule? How would I know, you know, the steps of the bill to go through and, you know, the contract, what should I be looking for? Um, and, you know, with all the different materials, how will I know if they're going to work well together? Um, you know, there's just endless, <laughs> endless, I think, one of the things that I would say about building is it is just endless decision making. Um, and being a researcher, I guess I just went into sort of normal mode about, well, okay, if I don't know about something, what can I find to inform me and educate me a bit better? So then I will feel a little bit more comfortable about the process. And my husband, um, while he's fantastic in his field of work, he doesn't know anything about building. And for him, it was even more scary because he just, you know, it was totally unknown. And, you know, we didn't know what we didn't know. So we just sort of started searching and also talking to other people about their experiences and whether they knew of a good builder and all that sort of stuff. So we, we I guess we canvassed fairly widely and started reading some books and things like that. Um, and because we'd been thinking about passive solar and off the grid, we knew we didn't want a conventional builder that was just going to want to build a project home. We needed someone that was going to be um, interested in doing the project and that we would be able to um, communicate well with so that if, if there were um, choices that had to be made, they would understand why we were making them and um, and just to have a builder who was really interested in doing something a little bit different from the norm. I guess we were hoping that we could build and be in the house within about um, a year to a year and a half, but we didn't know exactly how long it was going to take. Um, but we wanted a builder that was just going to be focused on our job. They weren't going to be going off and doing two other jobs and, you know, we were being fitted in and all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so I guess some people might have a bit more relaxed attitude towards the build, but my husband and I are quite, both quite methodical and organised and we wanted to find a builder who had similar approach to building as we did to when we do other sorts of projects um, and, and find one that would be able to work with us. Um, like probably a lot of people, we've watched a lot, watched a lot of grand designed episodes. And my husband and I would just be groaning, you know, when they wouldn't set a schedule or they had to find money or they decided they'd change something at the last minute or, you know, and what we decided to do was to have our plan all ready and not make any changes. Or if we were going to make any changes, they were going to be minimal. So they weren't going to impact on the schedule for windows or um, framing or interiors, plastering, you know, those sorts of things. So I had the design probably about mm, three months before we actually started going into the official design phase. And during that period, my husband and I reviewed the design and we had a look at it and we thought, no, nope, you know, we're fine with it. So we just, we basically stuck to that. And that was another thing that, you know, made it a lot easier and the builder appreciated. Yeah, well, I, um, as I said earlier, um, I decided to try and inform and educate myself a bit more about the building process. And um, we'd done renovations um, and we'd had a few issues with that. And so I started looking around for books, magazines, um, reading, um, uh, anything I could find my, you know, in front of me really that I thought would assist me in learning about um, the building process. And the New South Wales government has some useful information under fair trading and then the master builders do. And I thought, well, I really want something a bit more from the client's side of things. You know, something that explained in more detail about the process and um, would give, because the other thing that I also had in the back of my mind being a woman was whether or not all the tradies and the subbies and whatever were actually going to respect 
my role there as the project manager and the designer and the client all in one. Um, so I really wanted to make sure that I knew, you know, the different steps and what was happening. Um, and then if I didn't know, I knew where to go to find out that information. Um, and so I started, you know, trawling the internet and just looking around and I found, eventually found this undercover architect website and I had a bit of a scroll through it and saw the, um, the program for the, the manager build and just sort of had a bit of a look and had a bit of a think. Um, it actually, I didn't do it straight away. I, I um, took a little while to have a think about it and then I thought, well, no, actually that's probably going to be the most useful. And even if it only saves us money in two or three areas, it's still a great investment, you know, because just reducing the financial cost and reducing the stress and worry about a build. So I thought, well, yeah, just go ahead and do it. And so that's that's sort of how I found it really, just, just trolling the internet. We were very fortunate, both I think because we prepared and in our choice of builder and his team, and he had a fantastic team and there was so much respect on site for me and um, for my husband as the clients, but also um, in the preparation that I had done and the organisation, they could see that I was ready for this build and I knew what we wanted and I would be able to make the decisions quite quickly and that um, if there was anything I didn't know, I'd get back to them. So part of it was also just establishing a relationship with the builder and his team and them to understand how you know I like to operate and for me to recognise that any hold-ups on my side would actually hold the build up. So we, you know, you know, we were quite clear about that sort of stuff. And um, and I'm, you know, I knew I didn't know a lot about it. So I, I had quite a few discussions with our builder, and um, yeah, um, you know, we didn't have any problems really. So it was, um, you know, I, I said to the builder afterwards, you know, it was much less stressful than I anticipated. I mean, it was still stressful, but it could have been a whole lot worse, I think. Um, yeah, and it is a it is an important point, and I would have to say that after the build finished, and you know, a few weeks after we moved in, I did say to my husband and also some friends, I felt like being around more feminine energy. I'd had enough of the the male energy for a while, even though they were lovely. You know, it was just um, yeah, just different. Well, I think part of it was because I'd spent quite a bit of time having a look to see what was out there and um, and I couldn't find anything really other than Amelia's course. And I thought about the cost of it and then I had a bit of a look through the modules and I thought about, well, other courses that I've done, which might have been a craft course or, you know, learning something else like a computer software program or something like that and I thought well actually it is a really good investment you know it was like a minuscule amount of the total budget but it just made such a difference in terms of the budget coming in on time like we moved in a day after the scheduled finish date so you know we we were really really pleased with that and and we while we weren't on budget um, all the choices that we made to increase the budget were our choice. They weren't imposed necessarily by the, the builder. Um, we did have a few small things, but you know, it just made such a difference. And it just gave me so much more confidence when I was liaising with so many different people in the industry about all the different aspects. I mean, all the tradies in town you know, all the, the hardware stores, all that sort of stuff, they get to know you during the course of a build because you're going in there talking about all that sorts of stuff. And I think that was the other thing, that I wanted to have some ownership in the build. I didn't want to just, you know, okay, here's our design, hand it over to a builder and say, right, off you go. You know, I wanted to be, be part of the process and I thought that Amelia's Undercover Architect course would allow me to do that and as I said you know I thought well that's a really small investment um, for a huge amount of knowledge so for me it was well worth it oh um, you know it just it trickled through the whole build really um, 
site meetings, recording of site meetings, making sure we had them regularly and that we had follow up action happening. Um, when we were laying the slab, just knowing what to expect. Um, and even before that, being able to look through the contract with the builder, all the information that Amelia had there and to be able to go through it page by page to, to look for the things that you know, I needed to look for and to be able to negotiate and liaise with the builder about that so that um, you knew exactly what was happening, what would be the situation if the build went over time, um, what would be the situation if we had variations so that they were, you know, obviously going to be in writing, uh, which we did have a few of. Um, but yeah, it really just went all the way through the build and it meant that, um, you know, the builder was also confident that I knew what was going on and he wasn't going to have to come and, um, you know, harangue me for information. He knew that I was wanting to do that as well. And, you know, part of the, the information in Amelia's thing is about setting up a communication um, rapport with the builder, getting the builder on side early, and that's what we did. So I interviewed a couple of builders in the Armadale area and talked to um, Andrew Williams from Ada Constructions, who became our builder, and really was quite open with him about what we were trying to achieve and could he be involved in the design process. And the reason for that was so that if the, uh, the formal building designer and I came up with an idea, uh, we could check with Andrew about whether that was going to work or not or whether it was going to cost a lot or, you know, was there a better way to do something. So, you know, and, and it also meant that he knew what was happening on the bill before we'd actually really started. And so it just made everything so much easier. And he had the contacts for the certifiers and the engineers and all that sort of stuff. So we didn't actually need to go through a whole development approval process. We had a complying development. And so we didn't have any of the waiting time, which meant we could get straight on to laying the slab before winter, which then meant that the build progressed a lot quicker. So look, there's just so many things, just knowing what to look for when the framing's done, knowing what to look for when the plastering's done, how to do an electrical plan, which I'd done before, but you know, it really helped me think about the lighting and what we wanted for this new one. And just, you know, it's just endless really, you know, it, there's just so much in the course and you can, depending on what type of build you're doing, you can hone in on yours and your aspects that you're interested in. And I think one of the other things that I wanted to mention is that some people have said, well, they don't have six weeks to do the course. Well, neither did I. And I didn't do it all at once. I started with the first module and then the second one. And then we got to a certain phase where I had a bit of free time. So then I did the next one um, and I did it sort of as the build progressed but slightly ahead so that I wouldn't sort of be surprised too much so you know and it doesn't actually take a lot of time and I just think it's you know just invaluable investment when you're building your own home um, well it was interesting because I added up that during the build we had drought bushfires snow high wind um, transport failures, COVID-19, um, and then huge rainfalls. You know, so we went through the whole gamut of things, but I think there was still less drama and less stress, most definitely, than if I hadn't discovered Undercover Architect. It just gave me so much confidence to be part of the build. And, you know, the builder said, you know, he wished everyone had done it because it just made his job a whole lot easier as well and it saved us money all over the place so um yeah we still had you know our usual dramas and some things you just wouldn't expect at all um just happened and you know you just can't plan for those things you just have to roll with them but um yeah definitely much less stressful i think it's just having access to that insider knowledge and that it's presented in such an easily accessible format that you can understand it and apply it straight away. There, there's just so much useful information in there. Yeah, because I, I just found it fantastic and I couldn't recommend it more highly because I really think it's uh, incredibly valuable for people that are doing their own builds. <laughs>